Uh, good afternoon everyone. Today we are present here to discuss about sutra, needle and sutra material. Uh, hi, myself, Amrit Basel, finally a medical student from NHS and I have here uh, our friend Onpom Singh Thapa and uh, uh, we have uh, Vizaya Poon and I have Akhita Nilkaya. So we will be starting shortly. So uh, while understanding the sutra material, first of all we need to uh, understand the sutra needle. So for that I will first demonstrate on a pectoral, uh, on a whiteboard what type of suture needle will be there. So there are different kinds of suture needles but for uh, our level we need to understand four different types of suture needles. So first one being is that the first type of suture needle is stitch suture needle. So like uh, we have seen in our day to day practice while stitching our clothes or tailor where they use straight type of suture needle. So, uh, one type of suture needle is straight type, so it, it is used to uh, suture a soft particular plane and uh, one drawback of this type of suture needle was that while navigating it, there was chances of uh, needle prick injury. So uh, this has been abandoned these days, but also it can be seen in some places being used. And another type of suture needle, it comes like this way. So it is a 3 8th part of a circle. So suppose let's say this is a whole circle, then this 3 third part of this whole 8th part of a circle, so this type of suture needle is 3 8th suture needle. Uh, we have here, so uh, I hope my friend will be able to, uh, so it here, so you can see here on the suture uh, table, also, uh, suture label also it has been shown here like 3 eighths of a circle, so you, you, you are able to uh, see yes, this yes. I hope, yes. okay, so this is 3 eighths, and another common type of suture needle, uh, it comes is half, so it is half of a circle, suppose this is a circle, and you cut it in a half, so this is, one half of a circle. So you can see here we have another suture material. So you see here. So you see here it is given one by two. So it is a semi arc in nature. And another common type of suture which we uh, which is used uh, commonly is J shaped suture. So this is J shaped suture needle. So this J shaped suture needle is commonly used to navigate around narrow structures uh, in uh, like uh, while suturing a uh, port hole or port wound and uh, it is also used in case of uh, anal canal mm -hmm. uh, or in case of vaginal. So these are the basic four types of suture uh, needle type which we need to understand at our level. So the first one being straight, another is three eighth, another is half and another is J shaped. Now, in this suture needle itself, we will talk about the body of a suture needle. So you can see, suppose, suppose this is the suture needle and while I cut the cross section of it, so there are mainly three types of uh, cross section of a suture body. So the first one being is, so it is completely circular in nature, okay. So it has round body. Another one is another one being is it can be triangular in cross section. So suppose this is our suture needle. I cut it through the middle, and then you can see it is this shape. And suppose there is triangular projection corresponding to the arc of the suture needle, then that triangular portion we can see here. Suppose this is the apex is upward. So suppose if the suture material I place it like this, then this triangular is facing upward. And another you can see it is called cutting type of cutting type. And another we can see like this way. Suppose the suture is like this, but the conical portion is facing opposite to the inner surface of the suture needle. So this becomes reverse cutting. So what is the significance of cutting or reverse cutting is that suppose while I stitch, suppose this is a suture needle and this is my uh, tissue plane. When I insert this suture needle, 
like this way into the tissue plane then you can see suppose the conical projection is facing this way so this is like common type of cutting needle then it will also cut through this tissue then there will be some space but while tying it what uh, it can be is that because of the cutting nature of the needle the suture it can transverse the tissue plane so that uh, reverse cutting type of suture needle has been made so that there will be some space but it will cut through juxtaposition that is opposite so reverse cutting it will cut from this plane so it will go like this way while putting the needle so i hope it is clear okay now you can see i would like to show it in here so you can see here there is a round dot you can see their level it is given so from this only you can make it out that whether it is round type of body or whether it is uh, like triangular in plane or not so sometimes it can be fully dotted round like structure or sometimes it can be uh, sometimes it can be like there can be a circle like they can be like this and on the middle there, there can be black structure now you can see here i am showing another example in it you can see here this is the triangular structure so the conical point is facing upward so this is cutting type of suture needle now you can see here in this leveling you can see here it is conical triangular but the conical projection is facing downward so this is reverse cutting type of suture needle now we have talked about the body now we will talk about the apex of the suture needle so most commonly the apex of the suture needle they are conical in nature so this is the conical apex so you can see this apex it is conical in nature sometimes it can be blunt apex also so what is the advantage of having blunt apex is that while navigating the suture there will be less chance of having like needle prick injury also and now uh, that i will show you after a while how to handle a uh, needle holder and a needle piece and how to transfer the instrument now we will basically be talking about now suture material so suture material broadly they are classified into two categories one is absorbable and another is non absorbable so absorbable sutures are those type of suture materials that are like they are absorbed in our body itself by different enzymes or if because of hydrolysis however non absorbable suture they won't be absorbed and they will be lasting so we need to cut the suture out we need to make the suture out however in case of absorbable type of suture we need not to do suture out so in which cases do we use suppose let's say we have a uh, uh, bowel obstruction and bowel gangrene is there then we reset the bowel now we have to do reanastomosis then in this case uh, we use absorbable type of sutures because when we do absorbable type of sutures next time we need not to go inside the abdomen once again and to suture it out but let's say there is out of the skin in the skin surface you can do non absorbable type of suture because uh, the patient is hospitalized so there will be under uh, medical team will be there present every time so at the time of uh, suppose let's say uh, suppose let's say we did uh, graft transfer or let's say flap transfer so suppose uh, on the diabetic foot is there there is diabetic ulcer non healing type of diabetic ulcer and now i did uh, gastrocnemius pedicle transfer i did so in that case i need to do absorbable uh, non absorbable type of suture so you will be in hospital yourself and after 5 to 10 days i will make suture out so this is one category so absorbable and non absorbable type of suture and another type of suture we have monofilament and multifilament or graded type of suture so in monofilament only one type of suture is being used that is it is smooth and it is having monofilament so single filament however in case of multifilament they are made up of more filaments and they are graded suppose let's see like uh, okay so let's take example of a uh, female here so when they like they don't tie and they just simply put it by combing so it comes like a monofilament it is smooth in nature isn't it and let's say like they have make an intro one so they make different designs isn't it like intro one like in nepal we say like uh, uh, chuti batik or something like that so that is multifilament type where it has been intro one like if i take example of my sock it can be monofilament like a smooth one but if you say like sweater worn clothes they may they will be having a uh, multifilament so we need to understand basic funda 
why these two different categories can we can uh, separate it out so monofilament one it is smooth in nature however multifilament it is rough in texture so while making the knots so we need to tie the knot so now you can think if it is smooth surface will the knot be stable will it be easy to make a knot no so monofilament sutures they will be difficult to make the knot and since now i will show you here so this is the example of monofilament suture you can see leveling is also given here uh, it is monofilament polypropylene blue okay so it is polyn type of suture so you see here when you open it up so you see like this is uh, this in pattern okay so certain pattern has been maintained here while uh, packaging it now if we take it out this monofilament type of suture material suppose i take it out and then i leave it then you see it again tends to maintain its original position isn't it so it has it is said that it has memory so when it try to recoil or to regain its previous packaging position then it will be difficult to make the knots however in case of multifilament so you see this is multifilament type of uh, suture material so you see here so i take it out and see so it does not recoil back isn't it so it for me it will be easier to make the stitches or suture and knot it so one advantage of uh, uh, multifilament suture is that it is easier to make knot so if we use monofilament uh, type of sutures then multiple knot we have to make however in this case two to three knots it will be sufficient and another one important thing to uh, keep in mind is that since monofilament sutures suppose multifilament sutures they are interwoven in nature so they go like this isn't it so while going in this pattern so you see here there are different gaps and spaces in it so that in those spaces bacteria they like to grow so suppose your tissue plane is like uh, it, you suspect that it may get infected or previously there was wound then it's better not to use multifilament sutures it's better to use monofilament sutures so this thing you need to keep in mind because monofilament sutures they are smooth so bacteria they will not uh, probably like to go and sit in smooth places rather they would prefer rough uh, like ups and downs uh, that different corners they like to prefer so this basic uh, fonda we need to keep in mind and now basic since we have talked there are four groups so one is absorbable absorbable and another is non absorbable and we have monofilament and we have multifilament okay so we will take common examples only because there are different types of suture materials day to day daily practice and our undergraduate level what are important we will talk about that only so in monofilament and absorbable type the most common one is catbot type of sutures so uh, this is like a mishnu word though the word it contains cat but it is not made up of cat it is made up of cat but it is not because it is made from cattle or sheep intestine so this is a uh, catbot type of sutures and you see it has property of being absorbed is it it and it is monofilament so in which places do we use catbot type of sutures So, and it is especially used in case of like leak under the like the mucosal uh, surface of the leak and oral uh, proximal uh, GI tract. So in these cases we use catbot. And another type of uh, monofilament absorbable suture is that chromium catbot. So chromium is like a, it is a basic element, and when the chromium salt is used with catbot type of sutures, then what advantage do we get that? it will be absorbed but it will be delayed for few more days suppose for especially intestinal uh, reanastomosis chromium catbot type of suture can be used so we have here uh, where did it go yes here you can see so here this is catbot chromium chromic so this is uh, monofilament absorbable type of suture now uh another monofilament however non absorbable type of suture classic example is proline and 
chronic uh, since it is non absorbable type of suture especially especially it is used in case of hernia repair so while uh, suturing hernia mesh with the tissue plane down there so we use proline type of sutures okay these are non absorbable monofilament type of sutures now another we have multifilament absorbable type of sutures so one classic example of this is vitreal sutures so vitreal suture is one classic example of multifilament absorbable type of sutures so uh, i hope we have here lots of uh, yes we can see here so uh, vitreal it is made from polyglactin 910 so uh, sometimes you may find this name also in your suture level so you can see here okay this is uh, vitreal uh, suture okay commonly used in daily life and another uh, multi filament non absorbable type of sutures that is silk sutures so it can be synthetic type so we have here lots of silk sutures uh, so you see here this is silk and it is labeled braided it means that it is multi filament so yes this is non absorbable multi filament type of suture now i would like to request my friend to focus here now we will take uh, different types of suture materials and we will try to extract information we get from uh, those labelings so suppose in exam uh, we may be given any kind of suture suppose it was uh, in the pack itself uh, we took it out and now you can see here there it has different labelings so you can see this is the suture needle design so you see here it is triangular and the apex it is facing down so it is reverse cutting type of suture and you can see here it is level 44 mm so 40 45 mm so this 45 mm is the length of this needle and you can see it has been level 20 okay interesting fact so previously there was a different uh, leveling of suture needle like 0.5 mm and so on something like that but uh, okay let's say like um, uh, there is a surgeon and he says to uh, scrub nurse or sister uh, give me 0.5 to 0.67 type of needle then it's like quite conversion so uh, what they did is that they began to level it properly like 6 5 4 3 2 1 so the 6 1 it is like relatively a larger in size so while coming down the size of the suture needle size has been decreasing now after one let's say one mm then the company they started making okay we are able to make okay more smaller the size of uh, suture needle so later on there was what to label it then they leveled it at zero and then again smaller size so they level, level it at zero zero and zero 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 so like this way there is up to eleven zeros okay so like sister give me zero 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 needle a needle <laughs> so it becomes a noodle <laughs> so for that now it has been again renamed right so zero is zero so if it has two zeros it means two zero okay so if it is three zero means three zero okay now and uh, there is like seven zero uh, <coughs> needle size uh, which is said to be equal to our hair filament caliber okay so that one extra point you can keep in mind so in this way now where we were so we were here so you see here this is 45 mm which is the length of this uh, suture needle and it is 3 8 so i have already mentioned it it is 3 8 part of a circle so this is 3 8 part and you see it is triangular reverse cutting type and you can see it is 2 0 it means the size of the suture needle has been shown here and now you see here it is braided it means it is multi filament and you see it is coated silk so it is made up of silk and most of the silk they are black in color okay so this is black in color so these are the information available here so while opening you can open it from here now we will show you the interior of it so now here uh, i would like to uh, would you like to pause the video okay we have our needle handle uh, needle holder so we have talked about it in yesterday's class also so while we need to be very much cautious 
while taking the needle out okay now you can see here i will be placing it here suppose like let's say we are transferring the needle then it is better to transfer it while don't do at the tip okay don't hold it at the tip because the tip of the needle it may break and then it can fall down to the surgical field itself so it's better to hold it from the base and don't do it like that because while you're giving it it is quite risky isn't it so what you can do is that so one thing you can do you can like place it near to the base and this needle it's better to face inward it is not like uh, till now it is not uh, quite appropriate so you see here suppose this was uh, i am manipulating it with my hand okay so you see if it is like going inward to the needle holder itself then there will be less chance of trauma so you, while giving you can pass it okay so this is the one way and another way you can do it is that you can catch it on the base suppose let's say mistakenly suppose if it going to then it will move on its own so there will not be trauma because i am holding it on the base so it will be flexible and suppose this is my finger let's say then it will move so this is one another way to hold the needle and transfer it okay so this is it where to hold and how to transfer it and i have already told this is multi filament so you see so it does not recoil back it does not have any memory and you see it is multi filament so uh, like bacterial growth can grow in it so we have to be cautious in like if there is a chances of infection or not and since it is multi filament it will have better process so there can be uh, fewer knots than the mono filament okay that thing you need to keep in mind and uh, okay now we will be looking about uh, next suture material so now we have here next example so you can see here it is 1 by 2 it means half of a arc of a circle and you see here it is 40 mm so length of the suture needle is 40 mm and you see here it is uh, circle round body so you see here round dot is there okay so it has round uh, body in it Uh, another one we had here uh, so you see here in this so you see here there is a circle and inside the circle there is black dot okay so this is also representation of having circular body so and yes this is size one okay previously it was uh, 20 this is size 1 so it is uh, bigger in size than previous one okay and uh, here the suture material it is made up of non absorbable uh, monofilament polypropylene glue okay so this is non absorbable glue most of the polypropylene or proline sutures they come in blue in color and now you see if i leave it so it goes to tend to have its previous packaging uh, positioning so it has got memory so it will be difficult while making the sutures or while uh, tying the knot because uh, it may try to recoil and then there can be chance of slippage of knot so multiple knots has to be placed in it so these are two basic types of absorbable and non absorbable type of sutures and uh, different triangular uh, cross section and circular cross sections we looked in it so yes this is the way uh, to so suppose let's say in exam if i am given this sutures then take your time you will read the labelings so you see here i will like start like saying from here only itself this is non absorbable surgical suture made up of monofilament polypropylene glue and uh, it is a uh, semi arc and it is 30 mm suture needle length and it is a uh, cutting type of suture needle so i will go in this way okay yes and its size is 20 yes so this way we would like to end our today's video on suture and suture material uh, thanks for watching and this way we would like to end our today's video and i would like to thank our cameraman omri sintapa and i have the cameraman is down there who is is at me thanks everyone see you next time